Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 9, Part 3 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue a discussion about God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing and discussing God's creation of the human conscience, how it operates, why it was created, and the role the conscience plays in the processes of forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 26th of December 2017 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. What the conscience causes in our emotional response. <laughs> so the conscience, when we're tuning into it, where we want to hear it mm. can cause a lot of emotional things occurring within us yeah you know? and and i suppose what we probably do is try to categorize some of those things into three main areas of course it's very complex about what it does but but generally the reactions fall into three primary areas probably yeah and again here we want to emphasize that that our, there's the conscience operation, then there's our emotional response. And now we're talking about our, our emotional, emotional response. response. So we can't say that these emotions that we're going to be talking about are the conscience. No. They're a response to They're a response to what, it, yeah. uh, what it's doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the, the first kind of grouping of emotions, we could say, is that we have emotional responses that are triggered that come from our current soul-based condition our mm. will we call that don't mm. we mm -hmm. um so that's our current beliefs our injuries the whole thing the whole box and dice of who we are right now right now yes and, and obviously there's a whole uh, huge amount of emotions that occur that are within us that we've stored unfortunately because yeah. Usually during our childhood and our formative years, we've learnt to store emotions rather than release them by experiencing them. Yeah. So they're now within us. Now that these emotions are within us, um, any truth that we receive, we're going to have a re emotional reaction to. Some of them good reactions and others bad reactions to the truth that we're receiving. Now, the truth itself isn't causing our good or bad or our angry or sad or whatever other emotion we have a mm -hmm. reaction it's actually just the truth that's all it is it's just yeah. facts yeah our emotional response is because of the emotions that are still locked up within us that we're yet to experience and yet to release and as a result of that we shut them down we 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 want to shut down the truth <laughs> rather than shutting down or experiencing our emotions about mm. the truth. But we are saying here that when we start to tune into our conscience, very commonly the first thing that occurs is that there are emotions that come up for us that were already within us, that we were just avoiding truth so we didn't have to feel, and now suddenly we, these emotions are here. Yes. Now, yeah. on in 2017, we put up a channeling, which was a guy called Rodney. He was an Australian man who um, was talking to us about his experience on earth and what some spirit friends are trying to share with him now in the spirit world about, you know, what he's doing or what he has done on earth. And, and, and I, I asked him to just ask God about a few questions, you know, about his behavior or his mm -hmm. treatment of women in particular and so forth. And the feelings he got from God, well, they weren't feelings from God, really. They were truth from God reacting to his feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're, we're quite hard for him to handle yeah. during the channeling, as people would be aware. But, and we've done that a number of times in many channelings, actually, uh, privately and the ones we've recorded. So people can see that our emotional response from, you know, we are capable of receiving God's truth about a matter, no matter what our condition, mm -hmm. but our emotional response to it might not be that good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can also have a different kind of emotion, which is like a new emotion, not one that we've stored up, we haven't wanted to feel, but mm. we could have um, a new emotional experience, which is based sort of on a mixture of how we are right now, our current condition and our will, um, and this new knowledge that we've received. Yeah, no, it's like a chemical reaction that creates something new. Yeah, a good example of that is many people who come to presentations 
particularly the secrets of the universe presentations we did back in the early days, you know, 10 years ago or so. And many people just go away thinking, oh, this is wonderful, isn't that amazing? Like, isn't it wonderful? And they, they can't stop talking about it, can't stop thinking about it. That's a new wonder-based emotional reaction mm. to receiving some external truth. Or, or other people I spoke to who just sort of sat for days and went, well, everything I thought about existence it wasn't real or it wasn't complete, you know. There was and, so and, much more going on. And I, now I know why it didn't feel right. Yes. Because now that I'm discovering the truth now, wow, that feels really right to me. So there's sort of validation or disbelief. Well, that, see, again, that's God surreal. saying it is right. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the communication of the con through the conscience yep. with God sharing. No, this is the truth. This mm -hmm. is my truth that I want you to know. But that sort of surreal feeling or that like um, questioning everything, that's all new emotions that weren't there before. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So that quite often it has that kind of, so, and sometimes it feels good, you know, mm -hmm. some, uh, sometimes it feels very good. Yes. And, and, and many people know who've listened to Divine Truth at the beginning, you know, they loved it. They, loved it, they thought it was great <laughs> until they started hearing some things about themselves and then it was not so good, right? Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, when you're hearing the external truth, you often feel, you know, wonder and, and, and fascination and the many other feelings you never had before about truth. Mm. 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 The third type of emotions that the conscience can bring up for us is, in a similar vein, new desires, new passions, new things that we, that we didn't have before. Suddenly, wow, there's a new possibility. I'm going to follow that or I want to do something new. Yeah, it sort of begins with possibilities, doesn't yep. it? Like the truth, once the truth is explained to you, and God is lovely at explaining things, um, once the truth is explained to you, then it's like, okay, what do I do with this? And, and frequently, because it's explained and it's so wonderful and so beautiful, we want to do something with it, yeah. and then that's now developed a new desire, a new aspiration with, that's coming from within me now, to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And and now that I want to do something about it, I, I'm now quite passionately following, okay, I'm going to follow this truth down the rabbit hole and see where <laughs> it takes me. And 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 you feel quite, um, what would you say, quite quite uh, uh, excited and, and passionate about doing that yeah. in that place. So so this is where faith now is being developed. So so now the truth knowing the truth about a certain subject can help you with your faith. And remember our definition of faith in the assistance groups was the definition of, you know, developing a personal aspiration, having a desire, you know, to do something that is in harmony with love and truth. And that's what faith is. And so now we can develop faith. The truth can trigger the development of faith in us. And so that's a new thing that's now wasn't there before. And even the faith to even desire a relationship with God or the desire to know more or the desire to act upon what we now know or what we now think is, is all new motivations that have come about from our reception of the truth. And so you could say in a way that they all come about from the conscience operation. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So then when th this dynamic that we keep talking about when I have a thought or a feeling or an action or a desire or anything, anything is happening inside of me, anything that we've been calling our behavior. In and, our and we need thoughts. to remember, if we remind our listeners that every time we use the word behavior, guys, we're, what we're doing is we're saying to you that it's anything to do with any part of ourselves, thoughts, words, actions, desires, intentions, motivations, all of those things are a part of our behavior, which the laws are measuring. So that's what we need to remind everybody. Yes. Yep. So I have behavior. My conscience is almost measuring the behavior is what you've written here. I, I'm, you need to explain that to me. Yes. Well, more, in a way I, it is, if you think about it, because 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 it's God's view of your behavior. Mm -hmm. It's God's view of everything. So so in a way, it's measuring everything you think, everything you feel, everything you know, up to whether it, God agrees with it or not. So in a way, it's a measuring system, a yep. comparison system, yep. comparing how we are or how I am right now with how God feels I could be. Uh -huh. mm. Okay, yeah. so that's happening. And then we get feedback. Yes. So there's a number of types of feedback we can get. The first feedback is when our behavior is in harmony with God's love and truth, mm -hmm. then we get sort of um, a 
feeling or the truth. Well, we get God's feeling about our behaviour being in harmony with love and truth. Yes. And God feels great about that. <laughs> so then we start to feel good about that. Of course. Yeah. Of course. So we start feeling, oh, this is really good. And not only that, of course, that feeds then into the fact that we're bringing our life into more harmony with love and truth, which also means that we have less pain and suffering in our own lives. And we start acknowledging that and that we acknowledge that that is a result of our deciding to take action on the truth we've received. Mm -hmm. And we can feel good about ourselves as a result of taking action on the truth we've received. Yeah. And so all of these things make us feel good. They make okay. us feel positive. They make us feel joyous. They make us feel satisfied. There's a lot of very good emotions that come about from, from that process. Okay. Besides God's emotion, which is good on you. you know, you've got that. You know what I mean? It's a feeling of confirmation. Yes. Mm. All right. Now, if we contrast that with um, if our behavior is out of harmony with God's definitions of love and truth, mm -hmm. um, then the conscience mechanism is going to have us sort of have the feeling that we've done something wrong. Yes, because in this state, God is saying through the conscious mechanism, no, this is not right. Mm. This is not truthful. What you're doing is error. What you're doing is going to cause your own unhappiness. It's God's telling you that. He, yes. He's telling you the truth, remember? Yeah. And the truth sometimes is you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth sometimes, right? So he's telling you you're wrong. You're doing yeah. the wrong thing here, right? Now, for the majority of people, when they hear somebody else telling them that they're wrong, there's a whole heap of emotional <laughs> reactions to that, right? Yeah, and yeah. so we often have exactly the same kind of emotional reactions with God as what we would have with the average person telling us we're right or wrong. Yes. So in, even if we are okay with someone telling us that we're wrong, mm -hmm. we the whole conscience is there to promote in this case, that we question what we've done. That yes. we that we that we re pause. That we pause and, and reflect. Say, Oh. And we have doubts. Yeah. We have doubts. It causes us to doubt what we've done. Uh, and, and that's the beginning, generally, of our changing mm -hmm. our behaviour. We go, mm -hmm. I said, well, looking at that behaviour again, I'm not really sure that it was very loving. Looking at that behaviour, I'm not really sure that it's going to benefit me or other people there. Mm -hmm. Looking at that behaviour, you know, it doesn't, uh, I now know it's out of harmony with God's truth. And, and, you know, maybe what I need to do is correct it. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is all sort of an emotional uh, process that's kicked off by the action of the conscience. It's mm. still our emotions here, mm -hmm. isn't it? Still our emotions, but the uh, without the conscience operating, would it had a, would it, would it have, have ever occurred? Yeah, yeah. Probably not. No, probably mm. not. All right. So, uh, in addition, if we have if we feel nagging feelings, uh, or if we have feelings like worry or anger or guilt or shame or regret when we ignore the issues of love and truth that our conscience is trying to tell us about um, and we have happy feelings when we uphold love and truth then we can start to see that okay now I'm becoming more emotionally open to the conscience mechanism yeah yeah so now now our responses are in tune if you like with God's responses more and more even though we may not yet have a relationship with God even. Hmm. They're more in tune with having a relationship with God. So, so here we've mentioned anger and resent, resentment, guilt, shame or regret. Mm -hmm. So these would come up if I'm, more, if I'm continually acting out of harmony with God's love and truth. And, um, and the conscience will tell me such because God's telling me such through the conscience yeah. mechanism. And that matters to me on some level. It has to matter, has otherwise to matter. you wouldn't have the re uh, result emotionally. Yes. So even if you have anger, it has to matter. On some or level. Or something has to matter. The yes. emotional injury within you has to matter. <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't feel anger, right? So something has to matter in order for you to have a emotional response yes, to the as truth. In you put a value on the truth on some level or a value or on a value approval. on the error. Or a value on the error. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. One of the two has to be yes. occurring. But I wouldn't listen. If I just completely valued the error, would I even hear the conscience? Well, there's a difference between a value of the error, isn't there? And then a pure, unadulterated desire to just continue with the error. <laughs> you could value yeah. the error emotionally from an addiction perspective, mm -hmm. while at the same time, you don't really feel that 
that the error is that good. Yes, <laughs> you know, you you're can, not proud of it. So there yeah. are degrees of yes. awareness when, you know, right from complete denial right the way through to, you know, knowing it's wrong but still doing it, you know, yeah. there's areas of awareness in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's some dynamic going on there where, okay, I've heard the truth that what I'm doing is not loving or truthful from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. Now I'm having this emotional response, anger, regret, guilt, shame. Mm -hmm. That's obviously the way God's created for it to happen, for me to have an emotional response. Well, but I don't feel like God wants me to feel some of those feelings. Yeah, let's state it more accurately. Yeah. The feelings of anger, regret, shame, guilt, they all come from error existing in the soul. They mm. don't come from the truth. Mm. The truth is just a trigger for them. Mm -hmm. When the truth comes to us, it triggers the error within. And the error within generally fights for itself. So naturally, those emotions start coming up as an attempt to fight for themselves. And we need to learn how to let go of emotion by experiencing it without letting them fight, yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. It does. In other words, without living in them. Yeah. But we need to learn to process them. We need to learn to emotionally experience them, which means we'll go through some quite, sometimes quite, uh, you know, intense emotional reactions mm -hmm. but we need to learn to deal with that that's yeah. that's a part god's god's designed the soul to deal with all your emotions yeah. so we need to learn that that's fine yeah mm. but we are saying if those emotions are coming up then we're getting more in touch it's a good sign yeah. because what it means is we're getting a bit more in touch with the mechanism and you know a person who's completely detuned often doesn't even have those emotions or is not even aware that those emotions are happening when yeah. they're he hearing truth. Yeah, mm. yeah, got you. Mm. Uh, the other point we wanted to make about um, the emotional responses to conscience was that children have a naturally inquisitive nature and desire for truth, and you've spoken about this, and that is something that God has put into each and every soul, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, that's how we can say every child has it. Mm -hmm. um, now, if the environment and the parents uphold that desire for truth mm -hmm. within the child um, by correctly parenting them, then the child will remain connected with their conscience. Mm -hmm. um, and the desire to ask deeper and more detailed questions is going to develop Naturally. as they develop, as they develop. Uh, cognitively and as their experiences, they have more experiences, they'll develop more complex questions. Yes. And that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Because you'd have quite a connected child growing into an adult yes. with a strong connection not only to themselves but to this conscience mechanism. Yes. But by the time I was five or six, uh, I couldn't. I found it very, very difficult myself to interact with other children because they wouldn't ask deep enough questions. And, and I was always into asking deeper and deeper and deeper questions. And so I finished up uh, eventually spending a lot of time with adults because I just wanted to ask more and more questions and a lot of the adults around me felt that they could answer them with, or even wanted to, whereas the children just wanted to play or whatever. And to me, a part of my enjoyment of life was asking the questions, like I needed to keep asking them. And so frequently uh, visitors to our house would criticise our family for letting me have a voice of asking so many questions at such a young age. but. The, the beauty of that is that it, it gave me the sense of freedom to be able to continue asking and continue that natural inquisitive mm. feeling that I had. Mm. And, uh, and all children have it. It's just whether it gets knocked out of them or not. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And um, the conscience provides us with the opportunity to have God's voice in our soul. Yeah. So this is a, another thing we just need to keep reminding our listeners is that the, the conscience is a beautiful mechanism that allows the mind of God to exist within your mind. And, and, and you know, to various degrees, depending on our development, of course. But, you know, the beauty of that is you can have a con conversation with God mm. all the time mm. and, uh, and receive answers. And that's not the same as conversations that I see people on earth having with God because that's all about them conversing with spirits most of the time yeah. or people claiming to be God. I'm talking about actually a conversation, emotional based conversation um, with the creator of the universe who knows all truth, which is a very, very different experience. And also 
only everybody who does it ends up believing the same thing mm -hmm. <laughs> as yeah a result which is of pretty it. cool mm. it's pretty cool yeah all right so that's a that's a we've just given a summary of really how the conscience um can show up in our life and the different ways that we can be responding to it. Mm. We're going to talk now in the next sections about some more detailed examples of how um, we might respond emotionally towards the operation of the conscience. Yeah, so we're still on the subject of our emotional response and and, and we've, we've chosen three or four of them here of different kinds of response. Of course, there could be a lot more, but yeah. you know, we're not going to be exhaustive about the thing or exhaust you about <laughs> it either. But uh, we also need to have examples later about different matters about children and what happens to us and how we detune from our these are all things we want to look at in our next section. In our next recording next day. Next recording day. Yeah. Because, because it, this recording day, we want to just try to get across to everyone out the nuts and bolts of how the yeah. conscience sort of works. <laughs> and I always get so head up because I, I sort of feel like it's all my blocks to these things, which are all based on the life experience and the injuries and all of these things that mm -hmm. have created a disconnection between me and this perfect thing that God created mm -hmm. so sometimes I think okay we're explaining the perfect thing that God created but all I can think of while we're doing you know even preparing it and is like yeah but how do I get back in touch with it because yeah. I feel so disconnected from it and I feel there's this damage that's happened and so that's why we and, and we need to look at some practical ways that you can get in touch with it but the, the biggest thing that I see most people doing just uh, uh, as a main point to raise at this point mm -hmm is that most people do not wish to act upon truth. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest way that you detune from your conscience. You see, the conscience is a constant supply of truth. And the biggest way you can detune from it is by not acting upon the truth, by just listening to it and doing nothing, or doing the opposite is even worse. So it's going to make you feel even worse. Yeah. So, so this is a, you know, it's always a good thing to act upon the truth, no matter how scared you are. Because if you act upon the truth, no matter how frightened you are, you will always benefit from your connection with the conscience then. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. The conscience causes sensitivity to right and wrong. Does the conscience allow me to know what is right or wrong, loving or unloving, from God's perspective, all of the time? Yeah, well, first here we need to remember that obviously the conscience is... The role, the role of conscience is for God to share truth with us. And while the truth can be personal, it, it also can be universal. It's not, it doesn't have to be personal. Mm. Now, I would suggest that all truth is going to affect us personally. Yeah. But there, are, there is truth about ourselves. And then there's truth about the universe around us, the external things associated with us. Now, because... Uh, mm. <laughs> you to say, yeah. I know. I was just going to say because often we we associate our conscience with, okay, should I buy that new car or is this the right school for my kids or, or whatever? Very personal decisions. And you're saying it's not just that; it's like, what is the best way? Well, it's to... highly unlikely that God will get involved in those kind of decisions. To be <laughs> frank, bad examples. Yeah, like, bad examples. Because both things I, I'm not interested in. But... Well, neither is God really, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why God doesn't give you an answer. God's ba basic answer to those kind of questions is, do what you like, <laughs> but consider love and truth in the process. Yeah, because there might be some factors That's about right. love and truth involved in those things. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, if, you know, there are, you can always usually turn some kind of desire you have into a loving one. Yes. And you can always also turn some kind of desire you have into an unloving one, but depending if, on your motivation. Yes. So you say I was weighing up the ethics of putting my child into a, a high level private school that only I can and 20 others, lots of parents can afford in my area, as opposed to supporting the uh, local public school and putting my child into there and funneling my energies there. I don't know. You know, that might be, have some moral and ethical considerations Certainly. for me. And so... Um, and it's worth finding out what those are. And my conscience if you don't might know them already. guide me in of that course. process. Yeah, your conscience can. Um, but you're saying it's more than just those decisions. It's also like, what is God's truth about um, the best way to raise a plant? Yeah. or something or, or yeah. raise a child or yeah. or raise yourself or, yeah. or, or, or. Well, so i was trying to think of something non-personal 
Yes, yeah, so, well, you know, there's also what is God's truth about the universe? How does the universe operate? How does mm -hmm. it work? What, what goes on in the universe? These kind of truths can come to us. Yeah. Of course, a lot of them can't come to us without the development in love to receive them because there's certain things that you need to receive God's love about mm -hmm. before you're going to understand anything about mm -hmm. them. But there, to a degree, we can ask these kind of questions, these universal truths. So you could say God's truth has very little to do with right and wrong in the, in the quotations, that, but instead it's God just telling us this is a fact and this is an error. This is not true. This is true. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> like God's, yeah. God's not saying you've got to do anything about it. Yeah. He'd like you to do something about it, mm -hmm. but he's not telling you you have to. So... If we go back to then me deciding something about the welfare of my child. Mm -hmm. uh, where can we stop with the examples? Because okay. if we can discuss more about the, sure. the content of the... Of because the, the examples we can leave to later, I feel. Okay. You know, if we can discuss the content of what we're trying to say here yep. and, and sort of explain it with some examples afterwards might be good, but we need to first All right. explain to our listeners, I feel, the content yeah. And uh, and then look at some specific examples that are meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing well with the meaning today. Look, just go for it. Go for well, it. Well, if we look at if we look at this, uh, that God's truth has very little to do with right and wrong, and it has what is to do with absolute. What is absolute? What what is the absolute truth about anything? About your feelings, your condition, your emotions, your interactions with other people their responses to your interactions, their condition, their emotions, you know, uh, the way everything on the planet works, right the way down to you know, how do worms work, right the way up to, you know, how does the highest creation work, right the way to how the universe works. All of these things are all potential questions mm -hmm. that have an absolute answer, mm -hmm. uh, an absolute truth in it, as their answer. But what God's trying to do here is he's trying to show us, right, Truth is always going to result, if you follow it, that is, it's always going to result in happiness and contentment and joy for you. Mm -hmm. And untruth, if you follow it, mm -hmm. is always going to result in pain and suffering for you. Right? So the purpose of the conscience is to help you avoid pain and suffering <laughs> and engage happiness and contentment. Mm. That's the purpose of the conscience. So, so if you're sensitive to right and wrong... Or to put it more succinctly, if you're sensitive to what God knows is good for you and you're sensitive to what God knows is bad for you, now you have the potential of living a happier, more content life and avoiding more pain and suffering. Yep. And that's the role of the conscience. So the conscience here, the subject matter is the conscience causes sensitivity to right or wrong. And, and if... The way it does that is by God sharing truth with us via the conscience. We now can become sensitive to, ah, oh, the right course of action, if I can use that in quotations, is the thing that's going to end up with the most loving, happy, joyful result for everybody. Yep. And the wrong course of action is the thing that's going to end up with pain and suffering for everybody or anybody. Mm-hmm. Now, once I know that, I can be very sensitive to the way the conscience works and I want to be more sensitive to the way the conscience works because if I can do that, then I can avoid more unhappiness and attain more happiness in my life. Yep. Yeah. So, so if I desire to be sensitive to conscience, I can know what is in or out of harmony with God's truth and I also now can know what is in my best interest and what is not. So in the past, I didn't know. And so what do I do? I have to experiment. I have to go and engage a behaviour and find out, oh, that was painful. I don't think I should do that again. <laughs> or, oh, that was really nice. I think I'll give that a go again. Or and many of our behaviours are, oh, that's really nice until five years down the track we've created this terrible disaster. And we go, maybe that wasn't all nice. <laughs> yeah. you know? And all of that can be prevented by a higher sensitivity to the conscience and the conscience can help us have higher sensitivity by telling us the truth about every subject and then of course it gets down to whether we are going to follow it or not or not whether we decide what to do with it or not so when you're talking about the absolute truth 
about factors. It's sort of like um, I get the picture of it being, you know, like an encyclopedia you can open mm, and it's going yes, to tell you yeah, the truth yeah. about things. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Well, God's, God, yeah, God's mind is the encyclopedia of the universe, isn't he? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's well, exactly that's right. What it is. That's right. <laughs> and, but commonly, the idea of a conscience is that it's just about moral, moral and ethical kind of factors. Mm. And, and I was trying to ask how we can marry those two understandings together. I, I don't think, think they need you... to be married. Uh, I, think it, oh. I think it's a given. Yeah, okay. It's a given because it's a given because we've said God's the, the conscience is the mechanism of receiving absolute truth. So anything that is out of harmony with absolute truth is error and therefore wrong. And anything that's in harmony with absolute truth is right yes. or truth. Yeah and therefore worth acting upon and listening to, acting upon and, and making decisions about. And, and I suppose what I'm thinking of when you're talking about that is that the way that most of us approach decision making in our lives is very different to how someone who is interested in their conscience approaches it. Because mm. if we think of the conscience like an encyclopedia of facts, mm -hmm. then we would be seeking the absolute facts the broader facts of any situation to help us make a decision that's right whereas most of us enter decision making in a very self-involved and self-centered way yes what should i do and what's going to make me feel better and what's better for me and what meets my addictions and yes what meets my addictions <laughs> usually what usually. helps me avoid my pain or exactly. what I, where i've yet to feel better or superior or whatever it is yeah. like but, but, but we need to do things like Ask God, is it good to avoid your pain? He'll tell you. No, it's not. I guarantee he'll tell you that. You know, so. Yes. But, and but we don't even bother asking that question because no, we, we already we, think that it's good. We don't even want to know we're avoiding pain <laughs> exactly. in the way we're making the decision. <laughs> exactly. So I suppose uh, the, the whole way of knowing what's right and wrong, we actually have to think broader than, or we will naturally think more about the facts of the situation or the or the well, no I, f I feel what we we'll be interested in those things. i feel what we need to do is feel less attached to our personal opinion yeah because it, most people are extremely attached to their personal opinions there's worth issues associated with their personal opinion and so forth we've got to learn to be not attached to our personal opinions at all there's God's opinions, which are absolute, mm -hmm. and then there's everything else, mm -hmm. which may or may not be in agreement with God's opinions. Mm -hmm. Now, many of my personal opinions may not be in agreement with God's. I need to not be attached to them. Yeah. Right. That's different than me saying, if someone asks me, do you believe this? I'll say, yes, I believe that. It doesn't yeah. mean that that's God's truth. They've asked me what I believe, which is different than asking me what I know God's truth to be about a matter. And so I will share what I believe because I was asked in context, that was the question and that's what I asked and, and, and that's what I'll answer. Yeah. But I know myself that whenever I say, I believe, that's very, very different than when I know God's truth on the matter yeah. is, and what I know God's truth to be on the matter. Yeah. I will then say, no, God's truth is, even though I believe God's truth is, mm -hmm. because I can feel the difference between those two things. We've got to learn to not be attached to our personal opinions, just like we need to not be attached to our personal emotions. And what I mean by that is we nurse them. We, we put them in our bosom, as the saying goes, and we breastfeed them. You know, mm -hmm. that's what we do with our personal emotions and our personal opinions. We feed them. We make them grow. That's not what we need to be doing. What we need to be doing is allowing the conscience mechanism to work, have God tell us what the truth is, and then ask yourselves, well, that's not what I believe, <laughs> and go, why? You know, what, yeah, yeah. what's going on inside of me that causes me to believe something different to that, yeah. and what can I do about that? Yes. That's the way we need to approach our development. Mm -hmm. Most people don't. Mm -hmm. Most people are highly attached for whatever reasons to their em emotions and to their opinions, their belief systems, and refuse to give it up for many hundreds, if not thousands of years, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm. And, and all the while, the pain and suffering that results from that position, when the emotions are out of, out of harmony with God's truth on the matter, 
is quite great. And it's so sad in a way because of this conscience mechanism, we have the ability to get rid of that a lot sooner if we were less attached to our emotions and our opinions mm -hmm. and we just felt them and we just let them go mm -hmm. if we need to and we experience them and let them go, we would have a far better reaction to the truth mm. than we currently do. Mm. Yeah. So uh, this sensitivity to right and wrong is only enabled if we have that approach. That's right. And that is really an, the approach you just described is the way that we're going to become the most sensitive to the conscience mechanism working within us. Yeah, if we do the opposite, which is hold on to our emotions, hold on to our opinion, of course that will naturally detune us from accepting any truth through the mechanism of the conscience. But it also it's going to naturally stop us from acting upon anything we receive anyway, mm -hmm. which means that we won't benefit from whether we hear, for, hear it or not. Yeah. We're not going to benefit from the mechanism of the conscience at all yeah. most of our life while we hold on to our opinions yeah. and hold on to our emotions. Yeah. So you can see that, that while the conscience might be working there, well, for most of us, it's just sort of background noise. Yeah. It's, not, it's not really something that has much of an impact upon our lives. It occasionally peeks its head through and pokes it somewhere and, and, and says, here's the truth. And, and sometimes we respond to that when we want to or when we think it's in our interest. But we need to get away from that way or method of operation and into this method of operation where we accept everything the conscience says as at least God's opinion on the matter. Mm -hmm. And then we decide, do I want to decide to shift my opinion or my emotion so that I can have God's opinion inbuilt within me. Mm. And that, that is a decision of will. That's a choice that we need to make. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so probably what I'd like to say there too is that we, we've got to, because you can see I'm always referring here now to the will. Yes. That gift of will is such a powerful thing, isn't it? It's like Definitely. Without, without us making some choices, decisions, uh, and seeing that, like here God is just presenting information, presenting information, whether it's emotional or, or intellectual, he's just presenting information to us. That's all he's trying to do through the mechanism of the conscience. And, and it really is going to depend a lot upon our will as to what we're going to do with that. Mm. If we have a developed will to love ourselves and others, there's a high likelihood we will listen to it. If our will is not developed very much in that regard, there's a high likelihood we will hold to our bosom, hold to us ourselves, our opinions and our, you know, our beliefs and our desires and our addictions. They'll all be held to us and we'll do that. Yeah. To our own detriment, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. But we will do it. Yeah. yeah. So if we can get away from that and get, get more sensitive to the conscience and which helps us then be sensitive to this right, you know, what's going to make us happy and wrong, what's going to make us unhappy. Mm -hmm. Now we have the option of living a much more satisfying life without, without pain than we had before. Mm. Mm. This relationship between the constantly operating mechanism of the conscience and our condition and our desire is so important isn't it it is it's yes. like it's like a gift that can only be enabled if we have certain conditions or desires set up within our soul mm -hmm. and our emotional response actually which is what we're talking about in this section yeah is largely governed by those other factors not by the conscience mechanism yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's very it's very powerful if we if think about it in terms of the effect it could have on our life mm -hmm. but only if we're allowing any personal response to that, yeah. to that mechanism. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. The conscience is God's method of communicating truth with me. Is my conscience a way of having direct communication with God? Well, yes, uh, conscience is, a, is the method of having direct communication with God. Obviously, God knows what we feel and what we think and what our mind is processing. He knows uh, what emotions we have at any point in time. That, that's all automatic. His soul is sensitive enough to know everything that's coming from us. Mm -hmm. The key is what is, God, what, what is coming from God? Where, the key is how do I know what God feels about a matter? How do I know what God knows about a matter? Well, the conscience is that mechanism mm. via which I can come to know what God knows about a matter. So, of course, 
the con- the conscience is a is a is really a great method, one of the many or few direct methods, <laughs> but many indirect methods. Yep. The, so the con- the conscience is one of the few direct methods that God has of communicating with me. Mm-hmm. And love, God's love, the the love connection with God is the other direct method God has to communicate with me. And then there's all these indirect methods that are all you know available to us as well that God can communicate with me when he can't use and in particular he tries when he can't use those yeah, two obvious. other primary methods of course all methods are happening concurrently yeah and um, you know God doesn't make one method go away just because we deny it mm-hmm. it's still there it's all happening concurrently it's just whether we're receiving the communication mm-hmm. or not mm-hmm. so so it really does get down to the fact that the conscience is God's way of helping me be more sensitive to what the truth is. Yeah. The absolute truth is. And but but it, it's not our it's important for us to see that that it's not our sensitivity to the truth. It's God's sensitivity to the truth transmitted to us. Mm-hmm. And there's a very big difference between yeah, that because frequently our sensitivity to truth is very very poor, you yeah. know, where we're yeah. often full of error and emotional injury particularly you know being born into into subsequent generations of people who have engaged sin and engaged all of these addictions and so forth the these these emotional injuries are now in me so now i'm very desensitized Mm -hmm. to truth really in that state but there's still this part of me that can be supremely sensitized to what the truth is because god is the person that is transmitting information to it so so this allows me to have even though i'm desensitized to the truth to allow, allows me to still receive some <laughs> yeah mm. and that's a pretty powerful thing if you think about it it is and i have a lot of questions about that though in terms of um it seems that even though our will is attuned to the denial of truth in that scenario that you just spoke of, so our current condition mm-hmm. and even our faith and our desire is attuned to the lack of mm-hmm. truth, yep. God is still giving us truth. Fair enough, in that state we wouldn't be very sensitive to that. Potentially not. No. But who knows? Yeah. You know, it depends on the subject matter and yeah. doesn't it like it? Some matters we're may be open you know and Mm -hmm. and so you definitely receive truth about Mm. those particular matters and it's really an expression of god's love then for knowing that truth brings us happiness and he's trying to share this truth with us no matter what our condition Mm -hmm. and he also knows that you know even though our condition might be quite bad at times there's certain areas where he can help us still yeah if we, if and that there's certain areas that we'll listen to his help mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. and so this is the mechanism where the conscience is very effective where there's certain areas in our life where we will listen and sure sure enough he'll have the effect that he'll have by telling us so you see this a lot with uh with physical things you know people are pretty open nowadays with physical things health issues and other things like that and so nowadays, God's, uh, God can communicate quite a lot through people's consciences, things like, is smoking good for you or bad for you? And is drinking good for you or bad for you? Over drinking good for you or bad for you? What effect does it has on your life? And all these kind of things. And should you treat your child this way? And all these kind of things. There's a lot of people who are stu- concerned about these matters on earth. And so naturally, God can share the truth about those matters, even though God can't share bigger universal truths with with that person. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And as you've said, it's, it's impossible to, to completely detach ourselves from the mechanism of our conscience. We can't shut it off. Mm. It's always going to be there. It's just whether, and so for some things we we will, we will, we will hear, we will hear here. Yeah. Whether we listen and, yeah. and act upon it, yeah. well, that, that's a different matter. That's the will and the desire. Th- that's yeah. right. And, and also, as you pointed out before, you know, there's certain characteristics or, or conditions in the soul, like our desire for ethics, for example, and things like mm-hmm. that, that will have a bearing on how much or what we listen to, mm. certainly. Mm-hmm. Even our friends have a bearing about what, what we listen to and how much we listen to. 
their opinions and our desire to please their opinions <laughs> has a huge effect Massive. on our willingness to listen to God. Yes. You know, because frequently we're addicted to obtaining friendships or maintaining friendships or ma obtaining or maintaining our parental relationship or whatever, when those relationships might be very destructive for us mm -hmm. from God's perspective. And we're frequently in that state. So it just depends a lot on our desires as to what we will act upon. But at least we're able to listen or yeah. he hear, hear, hear it. Hear. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so okay. the conscience is God's method of communicating truth to me. And we can hear it, but what are we going to do about it? <laughs> it's a real question, and that's a completely different question, really. Yeah. <laughs> as to what are we going to do compared with hearing it? <laughs> yes. Anybody can hear anything being said, but um, not everybody or very few people frequently act upon the truth of what's being said. Yeah. And, yeah. and do something about yeah. it. In other words, they don't make it their own yeah mm. and and during this discussion i'm constantly <clears throat> thinking about the difference between the reception of god's love and the reception of god's truth mm. because really the reception of god's love is completely based upon my longing mm -hmm. isn't it it's not to say that god isn't delivering the love right here mm -hmm. <laughs> to me every moment god is that's right yes uh, so I'm not. I'm saying that's happening, but I'm never going to receive it until I long for it. That's exactly true. Um, the same applies to God's truth in a way, though. Even though the truth is being transmitted mm. and received by the conscience mechanism inbuilt in the soul, whether it's actually in your soul, received by your soul, well, that's a different matter. Definitely. That definitely depends on your desire. Definitely. Mm. But that's, that's all about my desire still. So the reception of, into my soul of, of the truth, truth and the, that the truth will never leave me is, it, is up to my will and desire. Correct. Just like the love. Exactly yes. the same as it is with the love. That's right. It's never going to enter me. And once it, en but once it enters me, it's never going to leave me. It's exactly the same as the truth. Yes. However, it's like there's this additional feature. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Design feature. Design feature. Yeah. You know, an upgrade to the app, yeah. which says like, you are getting truth all the time, all the time, all the time. And that's sort of unique to love, isn't it? I mean, I can see in the construction of our entire universe, there's love inherent in all of God's creation. When you say it's unique, I suppose it's more about the way love is, isn't it? Because yes. love is an emotion that has to be felt to be experienced. Mm -hmm. Truth, besides being emotional, can also be a thought mm -hmm. that can be thought to be experienced mm -hmm. as well as be felt to be experienced. Yeah. So the nature of truth is such that it allows for this additional feature. Yeah. And the additional feature is it can be, he you can be hearing it without acting upon it yeah. and without doing anything about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So it is a direct communication from mm -hmm. God of truth. It's not the same as receiving God's love. No, because there God's are similarities, of course, but not the same. Similarities. But this, this conscience thing, it's not like receiving truth into the soul and having it as our own knowledge that's right so that, that requires the additional desire of the soul desire of the soul so now we'll just talk about the conscience the conscience mechanism it is a it is a receiving of truth to some degree mm -hmm. um directly from god but it's not the same as receiving love from god you could say God's, it's the hearing of truth from God, yeah, isn't it? Rather yeah. than the receiving of it. Yes. <laughs> sort of like it's a, to receive it. Yeah, to with receive it, it yeah. we've got to get it in us somehow. Yes. But to hear it, well, that just requires the soul's hearing capacity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But God's love, when we do receive it, it does sort of um, tune us into God's truth as we receive it. Well, no, what it does is it, is it expands. Remember, it expands and grows the soul to the point where it now is able to receive more truth. So, so the love has a transformative effect on the soul. The truth will only transform you if you act upon it. The love will transform you automatically once you've received it. Right? So, so the truth requires an additional step on our part. It does, but it's a prepare, the, the, the love has some sort of superpowers that <laughs> that um 
<laughs> I'm waiting for you to say the wrong thing, babe. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got to get across to our listeners that the love can transform the soul into a new creature, allowing that new creature now to absorb more truth. But whether that true new creature absorbs more truth or not depends upon the choice of the creature. But it is true that God's love is necessary before some truth can be received. Yes, it is true that God's love has to be received before any truth above the sixth dimension in its degree of love can be received by the soul. So that is true. Yes. And, and, the, and this is why we've encouraged people so much to keep the experiment going about receiving <laughs> God's love. You know what I mean? Because yes. uh, the more of a transformative effect it has upon you on the soul, the greater there is the ability for you to now, you know, have more truth come to you and therefore act upon that and yeah. benefit your life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, finally, we did want to make the point that some teachings on earth call the conscience the thought adjuster and or the internal thought adjuster. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's not really true or that's not true at all because the conscience doesn't affect our thoughts. It... Um, it rather just, as you said, delivers the information, kind of like Google or an encyclopedia, except from a very, very high source of absolute truth, that is God. Yeah. Um, and then we get to decide and think and feel about that, what we have received. Yeah. Um, it's not adjusting our thoughts or no, even adjusting our emotions. No, you could say that we have to adjust our thoughts and we have to adjust our emotions. It just provides the information required to do so. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. Mm -hmm. It doesn't force us into adjusting our thoughts mm -hmm. and it doesn't force us into adjusting our emotions. Yeah. So there's uh, things like Urantia book teachings, which is a, a, a book that was written in the 30s or channeled material that talk about the internal thought adjustment. It gets very complex, the book, you know, because of it's all being thought based. Mm -hmm. But the real problem with it is that it basically implies that God is they're trying to adjust your thoughts all the time, or we have some kind of mechanism that's adjusting our thoughts. No, the thing that adjusts your thoughts is your desire to do so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at some point you need to make the choice and decision to do so. All the conscience does is provide you with enough facts to make a valued, a va you know, a valued decision about mm. whether you should or not mm. do something with your thoughts and your emotions. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. The conscience does not force me into a relationship with God. <laughs> okay, so does having a conscience mean I'm already in a relationship with God via my conscience without being aware of it? Well, here let's look at what God defines as a relationship. Okay. God defines a relationship as being a love-based exchange between two or more people or beings that are free will, free thinking and self-aware. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if there's something happening that's unconscious <laughs> yeah. and, and also not a love-based exchange, then therefore there is no relationship mm. from God's perspective. Mm. So, so the reality is if we're just listening to our conscience but we're not having a love-based exchange with God, then basically we're still not having a relationship with God from God's perspective. And we're not really in a relationship. We're just in a receiving state. Like, you know, we're just listening. That's all we're doing. It's a bit like a person coming along to one of our seminars and that's all they do. Just come there, sit down, listen for a, three, three or four hours or hear for three mm -hmm. or four hours and then get up and walk home. You know, they're that, not in a relationship. Not, I don't have a relationship yeah. with them. Yeah. <laughs> they're just hearing information. Got you. To have a relationship with them, we'd have to have day-to-day -day interactions. We'd have to, you know, uh, have a love-based exchange, we'd have to, and, yep. and do all of those things, which yep. is obviously not happening. I'm loving them by giving them information, but they're just sitting there receiving it and not doing anything mm -hmm. many times about it. Or even if they were, I don't know whether they are or not, so therefore I don't have a relationship with them. Mm. Does it make sense? It does make sense. So yeah. inherent in any relationship is the desire for the relationship to exist. And the desire level. to exchange thoughts, yeah, words, emotion. ideas yeah. with that particular individual, you yeah. know, and 
And that, that has to come from the heart and it's also based upon how much you want to spend time and desire to interact with that other individual. Yeah. Now, now, from God's perspective, God's always open to the relationship. Mm -hmm. But the relationship is not established through the mechanism of a conscience. No. The relationship is established through the mechanism of the Holy Spirit interacting with the desire of pray or prayer, the prayer mechanism on, yeah. on the human soul. Yeah. The prayer mechanism, which is the desire for God's love to enter the soul, which connects the Holy Spirit with God's soul, is the mechanism by which we develop a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. The conscience is the mechanism by which we receive truth from God only. And even then, we can't say we've really received it. No. We've only it. really heard it. Yeah. And, uh, and then what we choose to do with it thereafter will determine whether we've received it or acted upon it or not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then, uh, even though we're saying again and again that there's a direct communication of truth from God via the conscience, there's a connection with God, if you like, mm -hmm. we're saying definitively it is not a relationship and it doesn't force a relationship, certainly. No. no. Obviously, God knows whether God has a relationship with you, just like you would know if you had a relationship with God. You know, and the conscience is more of a, you could think of it as a mechanism that's just about truth, the exchange of ideas, you mm -hmm. could say. Mm -hmm. But from God's perspective, it's the exchange of ideas that are both absolutely true and emotionally true mm -hmm. uh, from God's perspective. So, so, so it's a way of getting to know God mm -hmm. and therefore wanting a relationship with God, mm -hmm. but it's not a a part or form does not form a part of having the relationship because that has to be love that motivates that, that relationship motivates that obviously though when we're in a state where we're willing to receive truth from somebody that does help a relationship definitely because <laughs> if you're not willing to be in a state of truth with a person then obviously there's a higher likelihood that no relationship exists really <laughs> well so, without truth no yeah. relationship can exist no. But remember the Holy Spirit, which is the thing, connection that w which occurs through prayer, mm -hmm. is a spirit of truth anyway. So, mm -hmm. so the Holy Spirit is only able to operate if we're in a state of truth about our feelings. And yes. So, so this is, um, we haven't really discussed the difference between the conscience and the Holy Spirit, have we? And perhaps we can talk about that at a, in a later session, but um, essentially, you're saying there that the Holy Spirit is just like God, ready to connect to us, or it's the mechanism by which God connects with us, but it can only almost be attracted and to us when we're in a state of truth about ourselves. Yeah, but it's also our desire for a love-based relationship. Yes, that it has to the be two sincere. factors. Yeah. yeah. So prayer is the desire for a love-based relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And and this prayer, of course, always receives an answer from the Holy Spirit. And the reason why I called it Holy Spirit was I felt that anything to do with love was holy. So, so the Spirit, that is the conduit via which love flows, to me was holy the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit that was special, unique in, in that regard. The reality is there are laws that allow the transmission of truth and there are spirits that God has that allows the transmission of truth. Yeah. And so there are, is a spirit, which I, which I have named, but oh, you know, there's no need to talk about it, yeah, yeah. But, but it is a spirit that allows the connection of God's soul to your conscience receptor uh -huh. regarding truth. Now, that's not the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, because Holy Spirit is all about love, you know, and this is about truth, which is has has holy connotations or potentialities, mm -hmm. but is not the reality of of it. The, the, the reality can only occur through the relationship in love. Mm. Mm. And also it feels to me that the conscience is not operating on my desire. It's on God's desire. Whereas, um, you know, it's delivered regardless of my desire. Whereas the reception of God's love and the 
prayerful state, that's all about my desire mm-hmm. and my desire for truth and love in that moment. Yeah, when you say with the conscience that it's not delivered, like it, 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 you, you hear it, but of course the desire is what's going to get it in your soul. Yeah. So, so similar to love in that regard, that it's the desire that gets it in your soul, mm-hmm. but you can still hear it without actually having it in your soul. Yes, but I mean, it's, it's, it's arriving based on God's desire for us to have truth, not on my desire to have truth. That, well, it's arriving. Arriving. But yeah. not entering, because entering exactly. is based on my desire to yes. have it, the truth. Yes. Yeah. 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 Whereas, um, yeah, okay. Whereas I'm with good. the love, it won't even arrive without no, desire. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's it can't what arrive. Yeah. And that's the nature of love versus the nature of truth. Truth is factual information and therefore yes. does not necessarily need to have a emotional connotation, whereas love is always an emotion mm-hmm. and it's not just factual information. Yes. And so that love, therefore love must always have an emotional connotation. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, so, so the conscience then is not the establishment of a relationship with God. It is a mechanism of communication only. And it doesn't force me into a relationship with God either because it's just information. Like I yep. can decide to ignore it yes. or, or accept it. Yes. Um, but, but God's not trying to force me into anything. He, he's just trying to provide me with facts so that I can make valued, you know, just wise decisions, decisions, choices yes, in my life. That's the reason why he's provided it. Uh, and so going, building on what you said earlier, though, um, if I develop a receptivity inside of myself, a desire to hear what my conscience is saying, yeah. obviously that's going to help me establish some qualities that are going to stand me in good stead if I do want a relationship with God. It's also highly likely going to trigger your desire for a relationship yes. with God. Because you go, wow, that's a wonderful truth. Mm-hmm. Where oh, I can have a relationship with you based on feelings as well. That would, that would say, once you know that, yeah, because that's what I had to discover first before yeah. I engaged prayer. Yeah. Once, once I knew that, then I go, wow, I'm going to have that. You know? and, <laughs> yeah. and, then you, and then you know, you, know, you can engage the, the real relationship with God that way. So, yeah. so it does open the pathways, you could say potentially yeah. open the pathways based on our decisions and choices. Yeah. It opens the pathways to the potential of a relationship with God and the knowledge of a relationship with God and the p- potential of our receiving God's love. Yes. But it doesn't do it. We, yeah. st- we, we need to do that. We need to do it. Hmm. So when it comes to answering this question about, like, am I already in a relationship with God because uh, this conscience thing's happening, whether I like it or not, so aren't we connected? You gave a good analogy in the notes about um, relating to a radio or relating to a computer or something. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a good analogy and we yeah. need to mention it because it's like you could think of the conscience as uh, the transmission of radio waves from a transmitter to a receiver. Mm-hmm. All it's doing is transmitting information from one source to the destination mm-hmm. and the receiver is tuned in so that it receives that information and the conduit if you like is either the air or some kind of condition that allows for the, con- the transmission of the information to occur but but the receiver you you watching the radio or listening to the radio or watching the television that's the receiver you don't have a relationship with the transmitter <laughs> Not yet. No, it, not no. yet. You, you're just looking at the information that yeah. it's actually delivering. That's yeah. all you're doing. So yeah. you don't have a relationship with the transmitter. Uh, you don't have any relationship at all at this stage, right? Yeah. You could choose to go and actually visit the people who are transmitting the information, develop a relationship with them. Then you'd have a relationship with the transmitter. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, most people don't do that. They just sit in front of their telly or in front of their radio and listen or, or watch what's going on. And, and there's not much else that really goes on. And the reality is that's the kind of thing we could have going on with God here with our conscience as well. We, yes. could, we could basically just oh, yeah, there's a bit more information from God, no worries, you know. And, <laughs> and, and, and whether we choose to act upon it or not just depends on our desire, but that's not a relationship with God. No, no. It's just information coming from God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we said here it's the soul's inbuilt opening that allows communication for God without either 
without us either desiring or knowing about the potentiality of a love-based relationship with God. Mm -hmm. It is a part of God's design that allows us to see that a relationship with God is possible. That's right. So it's very important that the conscience is a very important mechanism in that it can demonstrate to us because we're receiving God's truth potentially at all times, if we're open to it, we now have, can have the potential of working out, oh, God's offering love. You know, that, that is something that I became aware of in the first century, that God was actually doing that mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that I could receive some. Um, but, you know, and you could say the conscience mechanism helps you get to that stage yeah. if you listen to it. Mm-hmm. but only if you listen to it mm-hmm. and act upon it. Yeah. And it's the same with all truth if we think about it. All truth only has the potential of benefiting us. It can only benefit us when we act upon it, when yeah. we do something about it. Yeah. And this is where I see you know, most people not really acting in harmony with their conscience because they hear things or have things confirmed only six months down the track to completely ignore it in their own behaviour. Yeah. And, and that's an indication that it's not yet in the heart the desire to do it God's way is not in the heart because you don't yet understand the positive benefits, obviously, of mm. doing it God's way rather than your own. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. God has not programmed me to be good. <laughs> is the conscience like a source code <laughs> built into my soul? That means that God's programmed me to be good. Mm. No, it's not, obviously. God's not programmed us to be good. And to be frank, we should be able to see that very clearly based on the world's condition, shouldn't we? You can see that a lot of people in the world are not very nice at the moment, so obviously haven't been programmed to be good. (laughs) If we were programmed to be good, whoever was the programmer didn't do a very good job. (laughs) But if we look at if we look at the fact that there's this conscience always sort of like telling us, no, 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 that's wrong. No, no, no. Or yep, yep, yep. Or, you know, that's true. That's not. That's true. That's not. That's not going to lead to good things that will, you Mm -hmm. know. That's something we can't avoid. We can't escape. We can try to, and obviously given the state of the world, as you mentioned, a lot of us are succeeding, but it's, is there an inevitability that one day we're going to wake up and listen to our conscience? Yes, because in the scheme of things, God's had forever and you've only got a finite life. So in the scheme of things, you put an infinite against the finite. Sooner or later, the finite is going to have to bend to the will of the infinite. And when I say will of the infinite, what I'm saying is really it's the desire of the infinite. The desire of the infinite is for that you're happy, that you know what the truth is, mm-hmm. and that you know what love is. That's mm-hmm. the desire of the infinite. Sooner or later, the amount of, you know, through the pain and the suffering and whatever other things we create for ourselves, and our own wanderings off here and there and everywhere, and our own distractions and everything else that we do, Sooner or later, we're going to, given an infinite universe and given an infinite amount of time, sooner or later, we'll become aware that God's offering love and that we probably should have some. (laughs) But, um, and the conscience can help us get to that position, obviously. If we were more sensitive to it, we'd probably get to that position more More quickly. More quickly, yeah. But uh, the majority of people, of course, at the moment are not very in tune with that. And so naturally there's long periods of time in most people's life where they're not actually in a state where they're happy or content or feeling loved or or loving and as a result of that they often do things that are out of harmony with what the conscience with what god's principles or got what god's trying to say to you this is a good thing and this is not such a good thing to do and we're frequently trying to deny the operation of the conscience but that doesn't mean that god programmed us to be good Mm. because it it, to program us to be good we'd firstly have to not be free will beings Mm -hmm. so so there'd be no such thing as a gift of free will if god programmed us to be good the other thing is programming us to be good would be very dissatisfactory dissatisfying dissatisfying for god Mm -hmm. because because if you think about it you create a being that's capable of having free will and then you're programming to not have it yeah (laughs) Well, that would be a pretty dissatisfying thing to do from yeah. God's perspective. Wouldn't it be better to, to give, the, give the gift of free will to the being and then let the free will, the, free will, the person, the free will decide 
whether they want even a relationship with you or not, whether mm. they want to be happy, loving, truthful or not. What, what do they want? They let them decide for themselves what they want. Yeah. A truly satisfying relation, relationship comes from you deciding you want to love me and me deciding I want to love you and you deciding you want to feel my love and me deciding I want to feel yours. That's where a truly satisfying relationship comes from. It doesn't come from me demanding you love me and you deciding you have to, or me programming you into loving me. Or being good, or you, that question. Yeah, yeah. Or, or you being good all the time and yeah. then I love you. Yeah. No, it doesn't come from that. that yeah. None of those things result in a satisfying relationship. Yeah. The same applies with our relationship with God. Mm-hmm. None of those things will, would, would be satisfying to God. Yeah. If even if they were satisfying to us. Yeah. So so we need to see that God has basically ensured that the conscious mechanism is difficult to shut down or turn off. Mm-hmm. We're capable of doing it because we have a very strong will mm-hmm. that we've been given by God. And we're completely capable of completely shutting down the conscious mechanism through our denial of it. It will still exist. It still exists. It's still, exists. It's still operating. Yep. But yep. we're just denying anything about it we're just yes. we're not sensitive at all not even sensitive to it we don't want to know that it's there we've closed the door on it we're not listening to it we've decided we're doing our own thing and that's that you yeah. Know? Yeah. and we can do that with god's love too mm-hmm. we can close the door on it decide it's not there decide that it's not possible all the other things we do to control it we can do that mm-hmm. and that is an exercise of our will which is the gift that god's given us uh, the gift god gave us without us asking for mm-hmm. And, uh, and we're allowed to choose to do that. That's why God did that. But, but the mechanism, if we become sensitive to it, now it has the potential to help us be good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or let's define good. Isn't good happy, content, joyful, right, blissful? Would that be good? Yes, I think so. So uh, the conscience has the mechanism is the mechanism that has that allows us to develop that potential the yep. knowledge that this love this blissful love is available to us and it's going to you know the knowledge of what it does transform us and so forth it has the ability to do all of those things of course but it doesn't force any of that upon us mm-hmm. like a program would <laughs> yeah gotcha yeah gotcha okay um Did you want to add anything to that? I can read a little bit more from our notes. Um, The conscience is God's way of helping us to be more sensitive to truth, which you've sort of covered that, I think. Mm -hmm. But it is not our own sensitivity to truth, but rather God's emotional sensitivity to truth that the conscience receives. Yeah, that's an important thing we need to bear in mind too, I feel. Yeah. Is Is that the conscience itself is not ours, it's not, it's not our thinking about all these issues. That's not built into me. It's not built into me. Yeah. It, it, the mechanism is built into me that allows me to receive God's opinion, mm-hmm. God's thought, thoughts and feelings on the matter. So anything I receive through the conscience is not my own. It's God's coming through me. And I can choose to act upon it or choose to completely ignore it or whatever else I might choose to do based on the use of my will. It's, it's, what I like about that is that once you establish a good connection with the conscience and, and therefore a good connection with what God's thoughts and feelings are, now you have the ability to receive God's thoughts and feelings which completely oppo- can completely oppose your own and, can, and yours can be complete, your opinions can be completely different. Yeah. And you'll know the difference and you'll be able to decide what you want to do about that difference, mm-hmm. if anything. If anything, you're yeah. allowed to decide to not do anything yeah. too. Yeah. So, so, but, but it does, it's, it's beautiful that we need to bear in mind that when we say our conscience is sensitive about that issue and it is really our conscience and not just emotions from our childhood or whatever, it's not really our sensitivity. No. It's God's sensitivity to that issue. And, and to our behavior. And, and he's just transmitting that to us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Mm. Very nice. Okay. And then we can choose to become, so God's sensitive to our behavior, God's sensitivity to truth, that's all being transmitted to us. Then the thing under our control is how sensitive I want to become 
to my conscience. Yeah, now that's an exercise of your desire, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what are you going to do now about yeah. what you're hearing from God? Yeah. So God is finally tuned to all of the truth and the, and the love in the universe. Mm -hmm. You're not, mm -hmm. and you never will be like God is either, mm -hmm. because God's an infinite being and we're finite beings progressing. So, so we're going to continue becoming more sensitive, but only if we choose. Yeah. You know, so, you know, there's like lovely scriptures in the Bible that talk about the operation of love upon the soul, helping the soul become turn from a heart of stone into a heart of flesh. Mm -hmm. and, and that turning of a heart of stone into a heart of flesh happens through the operation of God's love and our decision to engage the operation of God's love. But the truth is, that we hear through the cooperation of conscience can help us mm -hmm. to do that mm. and engage that process. Mm -hmm. And so the sensitivity that I develop, even just through uh, interacting with my conscience and desiring to become, so I might desire to become more sensitive to, towards my conscience and then I can start to feel how sensitive God is towards issues of truth and my behaviour. Yeah. So I develop a sensitivity um, but it's not really on my own that that's developing. No, not really. God's helping and, you. He's educating you. Yes. And God hasn't programmed me to be good. I can become good yeah. if we define good as in harmony with God's love and truth through developing that sensitivity. But it's not a predefined uh, course in my no, life. No, yeah. and it's not a given that that's going to turn out. In yeah. fact... It's highly likely that for many people, for, there might be hundreds of thousands or potentially even millions of years that they never have a relationship with God because of their choice. Yeah. And that, that is completely their choice. God allows every person or individual to make that choice. Yes. There is something in our notes so that I would like to add mm -hmm. to that, which mm -hmm. is God has programmed me to desire and assimilate absolute truth. He has. In so other that words, is a part of my source code. That is a part of your source code. It's a bit like but, the instinct of the soul. All the instincts of the soul are a part of your source code. It's mm -hmm. like the instinct of your body. Mm -hmm. It's the instinct of your body to consume food in order to keep itself alive. It's the instinct of your body to consume water in order mm -hmm. to sustain itself. And it's the instinct to breathe. These are all instincts. And God has built in these instincts into mm -hmm. the body. Just the same, God has also built in instincts into our soul. Mm -hmm. And these particular things, including the passion and desire for truth, have yeah. been built into every person's soul, not just our own, but mm -hmm. every person's soul has been built the same way in that regard. Mm -hmm. Every person's soul has a conscience mechanism. Yeah. So that's, that's an inbuilt mechanism. Every person's soul has a prayer mechanism. Mm -hmm. That's an inbuilt mechanism. Mm -hmm. Whether we use these mechanisms or not, that's up to our decision making. Yes. That's, that's our choice in our will, our desire yes. in practice. So to summarize then, mm -hmm. the conscience mechanism or the receptor in, in my soul is not under my control. It's, it's operation is not under my control, but my sensitivity to it is. Mm. Um, but I can't control how much truth God is transmitting to me mm -hmm. that's a constant yeah. um i can only or control can we say can we say that god transmits the truth as our cogni cognitive development allows obviously right. the amount of truth that a child is capable of receiving is different if the if the, if if there's an equal in in sensitivity between yeah. an adult and a child so both yeah. are equally sensitive Yep. The amount of truth a child is capable of absorbing and therefore listening to far, is far different to the amount of truth an adult is capable of listening to. Mm -hmm. A child beyond, so before the age of five, is, it's very difficult to understand any truth, for example, about sexuality. Yeah. An adult is capable of understanding truth about sexuality because mm -hmm. they've been through the developmental process mm -hmm. and therefore have the experience about sexuality. So it's very important to see that given the same level of sensitivity, a child is not going to be able to receive as much complex truth as the adult. Do you, is that, is that, it's a growing process, in other words. But is the same truth transmitted and they just can't cognitively or well, conceptually there's no, God doesn't, understand well, it? God does everything economically. He's okay. not going to transmit truth that the receptive person yeah. is unable to receive. Gotcha. He's only going to 
to, to transmit truth that the reception the receptive person is able to receive yes so so an adult is able to receive far more but an adult can't receive an adult without love can't receive truth about like the eighth sphere aside from it being intellectual yeah so god can't transmit that truth yeah uh, until the soul gets itself in the condition where it can receive it yeah and god sense. doesn't do anything out of harmony with economy as mm -hmm. we've learnt in our assistance group last year yeah but 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 god given all things equal god will transmit the same truth on the same subjects for the same time for the same period and, and everything else mm -hmm. Hmm. yeah very good okay mm -hmm. so back to the summary mm -hmm. um i can't control the receptor it's always operating i can't control how much truth god is transmitting mm -hmm. um i can only control my sensitivity to the receptor mm -hmm. i can control how much of the truth i accept and i act upon mm -hmm. and while god has programmed me to desire truth truth and assimilate it be able to understand it and yep. take it and in and to process it emotionally to process it to, to really take it in yep yep absolute truth the desire for that truth and the knowledge of it is directly under my control that's right so there's no predestined code that says these things will happen no. but there is a code that says this is your capacity yeah this is what i know you're capable of and this is what i know you'll enjoy yep. <laughs> and that's non-negotiable and this receptor conscious receptors in you mm -hmm. but all the other factors are kind of under your control. That's right. And, yeah. and if you think about it, that makes sense, doesn't it, from it does. the aspect of free will. Uh, it also makes sense from the aspect of God loving us, you know, like God's not going to force everything upon us. You know, the, the reality is we're allowed to make choices and decisions. And God hasn't predetermined which of us will accept God's love and which of us will accept God's truth. He hasn't predetermined these mm. things. He has given us the choice to make whether we're going to or not mm -hmm. and therefore bear the consequence or the benefits of making such a choice yeah and and god's always going to act that way because that's what love does yeah mm. yeah beautiful mm -hmm. <laughs> okay